Hello and welcome to Vavork. I'm Brian Watrous and this is part 38 in a 10 part video series where we're learning how to automate using VU Realize Orchestrator. Uh, in this uh, series of six videos, we're talking about the PowerShell plugin for Orchestrator specifically. If you haven't started from video number 36, you probably ought to go back there. In the previous video, video number seven, we talked about how to configure the, the Windows machine where the PowerShell scripts are actually going to run. Now in video number 38, what we're going to be talking about is the last little bit of setup that you need to do on the orchestrator server so that your orchestrator workflows will be able to call PowerShell scripts. So what you're going to do is you are going to run the configuration workflow for the PowerShell plugin. You do that by logging into the VRO client, go into the design view, click on the workflows tab, and then browse your way to library um, uh, PowerShell. I forget if it's in the Microsoft folder or a power a folder labeled PowerShell, but anyways, find the PowerShell folder. In there, there's a uh, folder called configuration, and in that configuration folder, there's a workflow called add a PowerShell host. So, as you can see in the screenshot here, we're actually running that workflow on the first screen of input parameter questions. It asks us to give a name for this connection. Your orchestrator server might be talking to multiple PowerShell capable Windows machines. You need to run this workflow for each of those Windows machines and give a different name for each uh, instance. In this next part here, we're asked you to specify the host. The word here, host here has nothing to do with the SXI, but rather uh, what we're asking for here is the FQDN or the IP address of your Windows machine where the PowerShell scripts are going to run. Then in the port number field, you're either going to specify port 5985 or port number 5986. Uh, 5985 is for when you're using unencrypted HTTP connections to the WinRM server. 5986 is for when you're doing HTTPS encrypted connections to the WinRM server. So in our example videos here, we're talking about doing unencrypted connections. So we would specify port number 5985. And then when you click next, it takes you to the next screen where you're asked what type of uh, server is running on the Windows machine where the PowerShell scripts are going to run. And as we know from uh, video number 36, Orchestrator allows that Windows machine to either be running WinRM or OpenSSH. In these videos, we're talking about how to configure WinRM. So you specify WinRM. In the next drop-down list, you can either choose HTTP or HTTPS. Depending upon which you pick there, you need to make certain on the previous screen you pick the corresponding port number. Again, 5985 for HTTP or 5986 for HTTPS. Then the last drop-down list on this page allows you to choose either basic authentication or Kerberos authentication. Again, this is the, the authentication that um, technique that's going to be used to allow Orchestrator to log into the Windows machine where PowerShell and WinRM are running. Um, in these videos, I'm just taking a look at how to do uh, basic authentication. So we choose basic. And since we chose basic authentication, we're going to need to specify the username and password for um, VRO to use when it's logging into the Windows machine where PowerShell and WinRM are running. And then you simply click the Submit button and make certain that that workflow runs successfully. If it did, you are all set up. You've got your WinRM setup done. We did that in video 37. And here in video 38, you've set up a connection between Orchestrator and one PowerShell server. So at that point, you're actually ready to start doing things with the PowerShell plugin. So join me in the next video and I'll show you how to do things.